Should we buy or sell Canadian solar? So first off, read this disclaimer carefully. And do your good deed of the day by liking and subscribing. So we have eco-friendly energy here under the mega trends, 51% away from the 52-week low, minus 32% pullback from the highs. Uh, so quite you know, meaningfully uh, beating the S&P 500. So here are the stocks, Canadian Solar. Uh, they are in the solar energy business, 49-ish percent away from the 52-week low and minus 24% away from the highs. Here is the company's uh, website. Uh, so they have you know a pop-up, uh, which is you know popular. Yeah, it's uh, you know a nice uh, informative. You got you know the utility side, uh, commercial, and also residential. Okay, uh, the uh, this image here is a bit messy, uh, but uh, that can be fixed. Uh, so company overview: yeah, over seventy gigawatts solar modules shipped, uh, massive module capacity, subsidiaries in twenty three countries and regions on six continents. Active buying customers in more than 160 countries. So yeah, this is one of the major uh, players in the solar energy uh, industry. Uh, so here is the chart. Uh, it quite clearly is uh, a stock that is, you know, it's a bit erratic. Uh, there's been some time cycles, as you can see. Um, based on these current time cycles, there is a bit of a risk that there is a major declining uh, phase. Uh, but that is purely based on the time cycles. Uh, when we zoom in a bit here, uh, we do see that a major moving average is currently in play and it is ruled by the bears. This green 50 week moving average is very, very, very shortable, short, short and short. So the bears are just yeah, coming back there to short. Uh, what is a bit dangerous for the bears is that the bulls are using this red 200 week moving average. So the battle between the 50 week and the 200 week is going to intensify because you can see that they are going to meet in the not too distant future. So the, definitively very interesting setup. Uh, and we can see that the 200 week has certainly mattered in the past. Uh, looking at the daily data points, uh, in this case, we can see, if you look at the 200 daily moving average, back here in 2021, it was a very clear resistance level. So the 200 day was just shorted. Uh, but you can see that recently the bulls have played more and more above that moving average. And uh, most recently, you see that we were above it, pulled back, above it, pulled back, and now we are above it again. So from the perspective of, you know, a bear, this is a bit intimidating. It doesn't make the bears panic, but it means that recently, if you were a bear and you shorted the 200 daily moving average, then you would have the trade temporarily go against you. And that, uh, it, it, it is a bit spooky. And in order to form, you know, a real low for a Canadian solar, the bears really need to just get shaken out of their positions. Looking at the RSI here on the weeklies, we have reached a level that has previously formed highs, so it's a bit, uh, it's, it's, it's a bit of a messy situation. Looking at these daily data points and the RSI, we have some lower highs here on RSI, but we do have some higher lows. Then again, we have bullish divergence between pri price action and accumulation distribution. Uh, the cleanest signal we got here was really the 50 weekly moving average uh, resistance. It is, it is currently a level that is ruled by the bears. So I do give the bears a minus four. The problem for the bears is that we did see that the bulls have been able to really challenge the 200 day moving average. So the bears are in a bit of a, uh, they are under pressure in a way they haven't been in some time. But currently, yes, it is a resistance level, the 50 weekly moving average that is, but you know, it's, 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 it's not as clean. Uh, set up, you know, for uh, the bears. Uh, looking at the seasonality here, so over the last uh, seven years in uh, in blue, uh, five years in green, and ten years in red, the seasonality is very favorable here to the bears to the right for sure, the average data. 
very favorable leading into yeah later August, frankly. Looking to the left, left here over the last five years, uh, July is bullish. Uh, August is uh, a very strong month, closes higher 75% of uh, the time. Uh, looking at the last 10 years, uh, then we do see that uh, July is a 50-50 month. August only closes higher 44% of the time, but September and October are very strong. Then we go big picture, last 17 years. And then, then we do see that July is a mediocre month, uh, for the bulls at least, but August is a bit stronger, uh, and September is one of the strongest months. So the seasonality here is frankly favorable to the bears, uh, except that August is a bit of a, a risky month for the bears, uh, but that could also be just a bounce month uh, in favor of the bulls, you know, temporary. But yeah, that is just uh, the data we, we have here for the seasonality. Looking at the fundamentals, then we do have a number two buy here from Saks. A value, F growth and D momentum. Industry rank top 36%, you know, solar. So that's pretty good. A market cap, $1.9 billion, no dividend. Let's look at insider activity and we get nothing. Yeah. Let's look at consensus estimates. Uh, we do see that seven analysts are covering the stock. Average price target is 29% uh, above us. Highest, 67% above. And the lowest is 6% above us. So I give the bulls a 5 here on the fundamentals. Now let's look at relative performance. 62% uh, positive correlation with the S&P 500. 96% with the Global Clean Energy ETF, ICLN. Then we have 95% positive here with uh, the Solar Energy ETF, TAN. And 24% positive with crude oil. So that's interesting. Daily data points, 23% uh, with S&P 500, 87% with the uh, Global Clean Energy. 85%, so actually less with the solar energy ETF. And then 2% here with the crude oil, positive that is. So looking short and long term, objectively speaking, we do have a stronger correlation with the ICLN. So even though initially you might think that, well, obviously the, the solar energy ETF is going to be most relevant, the statistical correlations are frankly more important. And that is because of how ETFs can have a bit of a wonky structure. So just by reading the name, you don't necessarily know uh, that much about the ETF, unfortunately. So here is ICLN over the last weekly data points. Uh, so we can see that it clearly is in a downtrend vis-a-vis -vis the highs. So we have a lower highs, but we have higher lows. So this low is higher than this one. So conflicting messages. Looking at the daily data points, uh, so um, the 100 day moving average in blue is a battle zone and the bulls are breaking out nicely uh, above it. Uh, interesting action here on RSI. Uh, still, you know, the potentiality, more potential rally left. So we are not at like a dangerous RSI level for the bulls, nor PPO levels. Here is the relationship between Canadian Solar and uh, Global Clean Energy ETF. Uh, so we can see that, you know, for some time we have been stuck in a bit of a massive uh, range. So here is you know, that range, up and down, up and down. And we are now, you know, in the middle-ish uh, level of that uh, range. Uh, if we zoom in a bit here, uh, we do see that um, we are at a level that has a tendency to create some uh, pullbacks. So let's look a bit at the seasonality, uh, because that is very relevant in that case. Yeah, over the last seven years in blue, five years in green, and 10 years in red, uh, Canadian solar has a tendency to underperform uh, global clean energy all the way into 19th of August. Here I am comparing global clean energy against the S&P 500. Looking here at RSI, we are in the higher-ish uh, end of this range, but not 
there have been multiple times where the global clean energies have outperformed uh, the S&P even more before uh, there being like a high risk of a pullback. Um, so a bit of a messy situation. So let's see whether uh, the seasonality can, can help us out. Yeah, the seasonality is uh, clearly uh, bearish. Uh, so I end up with a relative performance score of minus three. Uh, we did see that uh, the relationship with, between Canadian solar and the global clean energy ETF, especially the seasonality, um, yeah, it's, it's a bit precarious. And also the relationship between global clean energy ETF and the S&P 500. Uh, so yeah, we end up with a score here of minus 1.5 in favor of the bears. Uh, the key line in the sand is the 50 weekly moving average resistance. So as long as it holds as resistance, then uh, this one is uh, in favor of the bears. But if the bears were able to lose that resistance level, then the bulls would be very emboldened. So this is definitely like the level to watch going forward. On the topic of, you know, solar energy companies, uh, let's just run through some charts. So this is just about looking for scanning for opportunities in order to, order to make a decision. You obviously have to look at all of the factors. The key level here for first solar is the purple 20 week moving average. It's a level where the bears, they, they just come back there to short, they short, they short, short, short. And potentially they did do, do some shorting uh, last week as well. Uh, the problem though is that we are forming some kind of low at these levels. The 200 week moving average in red is in play. Uh, we have bounced from it three weeks in a row now, even though the wicks have been lower, um, yeah, the closing price is obviously most important. So here again, you have a situation where, yes, the bears are still in control. They have like the key level, but the bulls are, they are creating their own levels as well. So there is a battle here. Here is Sun Run uh, daily uh, data points. So you can see that uh, the blue 100 day moving average was a very clear resistance level. But then the bulls started to fight and fight. And they have now, you know, broken out above it. Uh, and um, yeah, this is looking constructive. Uh, it definitely is a major change from what we had here back in uh, April of 2022, you know, this year where it was just a super easy short taking uh, level. Now, the, there probably were bears shorting the blue 100 day here, but um, numerous of them have mo most likely closed out their positions. So they would, you know, naturally be very intimidated, intimidated by this price action. And obviously this, because there's a change now. Here is another stock, weekly data points, Renesola. Uh, in this case, uh, we have something we have seen uh, before now. Uh, there is this very key support level. So the red 200 week moving average, clear support, but there is always a bit of a but. The purple 20 week moving average is a very clean resistance level. So there is definitely a battle now between the bulls and the bears across many of these solar stocks. So while yes, the bears, they currently are in control, but they are in a situation that very quickly could change against them if they lose you know, these resistance levels. Here, another stock, a weekly data point, SunPower Corporation. So here you have the purple 20 week moving average, uh, very clearly uh, resistance, 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 and still resistance. But yeah, we can see that the bulls are very vigorously testing it. Uh, so if you look, you know, back here, you have resistance and then you have a major sell off. Now you have resistance, bulls pull back, but they attack again, attack again, attack again. So it goes to show you that while the bulls have not fully scored yet, really spooking uh, the bears, they are doing more now than they have done. But you know, the reason why it just makes sense to focus now on the resistance level, level for Canadian solar is simply because that is the key moving average in play. But we definitely have a situation where it quickly could change in favor of the bulls. 
because we did see on Canadian solar that you know it is uh, fundamentals are pretty darn good. Whatever you do, of course, uh, you want to uh, have a clear entry signal and a clear stop loss level, and go to diamondarm.com to get VIP access.